straight on your gun and get it out to do. That is your pretty safety to cover the reel. Um, I anchor up. This one I need anchors. I put on a nice little spot. And get it out. This lives on your belt at all times. So you can put that up to your head of your rig cord, drop your rig, you're diving free. Less chance of spooking the snapper as well. So you, you, you're, near, you're near the float, you're within 30 metres from your float, you don't travel too far from your float. That lives in here all the time. And my nice setup, I like to have it with that little bit of bungee around it. So when you're in a hurry, you can just leave it there, you can bail it out. Sometimes the snapper presents a chance and you just got to let your gun, your life go. You let it go, you still get your hand free, do what you want, you never lose it, it's always there. A mate of mine had an interesting experience, he dropped his knife, didn't have that attached to it, and the whole time he went there, when he went down, his snapper was chilling on the handle of his knife, and he went to grab it. Pretty first, be a sitter of a shot, goes to line up, and he was on loaded. He got that excited, forgot the lady's gun. <laughs> and he's still got the teeth marks of the snapper in his knife to this day to prove it. So. Yeah, that works, you don't tend to lose less knife, do it like that, so that's just you find it when you hot shot. Bungee, pretty easy. That's it. So that, the gear, because that's what I like to use anyway. Yeah. Good old snapper, where to find them? I guess that's what everyone wants to know, where to find them. So, I can only sort of give you my experience from pretty much the south coast. I, I, Port Hackey, all the way down to Ola Dulla Way, um, pretty much that area there to chase snapper. So, as an example, from I live in Wollongong, so I've seen snapper from pretty much every headland, from Windang Island, which is near Shell Harbour, Shell Harbour itself, uh, Minamara Island, sorry, the other side of Windang, uh, Port Kembla, Wollongong, North Wollongong, Taraji, Lambie, there's a theme there, in every headland old snapper. The diary helps, remember? Keep the diary so I know what time of year to go there. I go to places like uh, Balambi, for argument's sake. The, there's a bomb you're right at the back of Balambi. Mm. Yeah, I've been there a few times around Christmas time. Seen good snapper, got good snapper. There's a pattern. Just keep going back there, working those areas that time of year. Put in your diary. Guess what? You go back there next year, less time in the water, but you know when to go. You know when the fish will be there. So it's already paramount. Not so much um, mood phases than that, more the tides. Um, tides, time of year mainly. I don't, I don't really see look at the mood phases too much. So a lot of areas are different. A lot of areas will be um, tide dependent. There's some spots fish won't even turn up. A high tide, that's a low tide spot. So it's just, just time in the water. And the time in the water. And um, you get the results. Um, they'll keep it pretty informal. Anyone got Throw some questions at me, is what you think Clearly. Yeah, I'm getting to that there. Yeah. There's, a, there's a couple of techniques in shooting snapper here. One of them is snooping snapper. The next one's burly. The other one's just the old pin ass, shot snapper, pin ass man. Where you can swim up to a dumb snapper, it doesn't do anything, you can just shoot it. Very good man. <laughs> Very good man. <laughs> Very good man. <laughs> um, but that'll happen. I have had one in when I was seven on two legs, so I'm up with mid water, didn't flinch, didn't move, just shot it, just sat there, thanks for coming, that easy. It's a rarity. So it's not something you expect to do every time. You know, I get snapped up <coughs> if I commit the time to it, it's not they're not a fish I don't think where you can just sort of swim around and um, hope you're gonna get one. I pretty much put the time in for them, I'll get up if it's dark, I'm swimming out the first thing in the morning, the sun's just coming up. They switch in the kitchen first thing in the morning, and then that first 20 minute period when the sun comes up, it just stands to reason you want to be in the water. With pairs, of course, two of you in the water, not on your own, so two of you in the water at that time of the morning, and um, on an area nice and early or late in the afternoon, but I prefer in the morning. The morning seems to be a better um, time for snapper. Um, and just yeah, spend some time in, in early enough. When you say the headland, do you like? Do you want to chuck it a lap of the whole thing or are you just kind of like hanging out right off the point of it? Or? Yeah, they're not familiar with it. You're not going to need a headland, go for a bit of a swim. I had an interesting phone call today. Um, one of the boys um, got a couple of squad out of the case and um, just swim along. They were just in the middle of nowhere. So, but when you do find them, you can start early enough. Exactly where you can find them. I go off Shell Harbour a fair bit and you find them. There's an area there where I get them, it's just all white rock. So 
there is no kelp, there's no kanji, there's no nothing. You wouldn't think there's anything around there. It does hold fish, it's an aggregation of fish. You'll see silver often swim around it, just like a little finger of reef that runs out. And on top of it, you get silver sometimes, rim on the bottom, a few red mullies, you know, but it just holds fish. It's an aggregation. Damsels are little um, damsel fish. They're hanging around there. It's just a nice spot for fish hang. You wouldn't think there'd be snapper there, but you burly up there and, and the snapper then would turn up in that area there. So it's, um, but most of the areas on headlands you'll find, because it's various, it's various. That's all white rock, and I did a lot of diving in the National Park, rather than taken up there. It's more like New Zealand, where you will snoop. You tend to snoop the snapper first. It's big, um, big kelp boulders, big caves, um, vapor hangs. I, I tend to go there when the sun's sort of dropping later on the afternoon or first thing in the morning when there's a few shadows around and you've got to swim pretty darn slow because if you're going to do that style of diving because it's only shallow most of the snapper won't be in deep water I don't think I've shot at least 10 metres and back to me up when, when you're chasing snappers that'd be pretty much a limit yeah, right. so you don't have to dive deep for them at all you do see them in deep water I've seen them in 20 odd metres of water at fish rock um, back to shallow water where they live and you know, when they come in certain times of the year and you know, they don't fish properly Even if you haven't seen anything, if you find aggreg aggregations of fish, red mullies, bream, and all that, close to shore, you know, within that six, seven, eight metre range, where you can see the bottom, you want to be able to see the, the fish coming in, because what you normally do when you burly up, you, you, obviously you're burling up, and you, you, you'll see them, you'll see them come in, give it 10, 15 minutes, you'll see them come in. You want to be able to see what they're doing, you, they get, they've got a pattern, they'll come in from certain ways, you, well, you get to learn your areas over time, what tides, what currents work, that work better. And whatever pattern they come in, you watch them for a little bit, and then you start doing dives on them. Um, once they start, when you start sort of stuffing them out, you won't get them straight up. They're not a fish that you're going to, you might ask them, but you, you don't tend to get them straight up. Um, but as, as far as snooping goes, it's not, you don't really, not, I don't really sort of do all that much here, because you, you might spin, New Zealand's pretty popular, snooping for snapper. You might have a stretch of case that's, say, 300 metres long, you'll take it out. You swim 300 metres, you just got to dive down. Any, any shadow you see, swim really slow, as quiet as you can possibly be. Just snoop, snoop along the bottom, just with any shadow, any overhang, any bit of kelp, any rock, and really slow, come up, where you dive down, swim along, don't sort of scoot as you're coming up, just come up real slowly, even come backwards a little bit, then come up from um, from where your last point, where you're on the bottom, and you just have to breathe up, do the same again, nice and slow, don't overhang to that. So what's the hatching at a cave? What I've seen them in New Zealand, they, um, not so much caves, but they've got the same setup. They've got a lot of kelp with gutters and cracks and whatnot, and you, you swim along, but I've noticed one much, it's something out of the ordinary. You don't quite pick it, and you just see this little bubble under the, like the kelp, a bit of a drop off, a drop down, and you'll see the bit of a shape, round shape looks out of the ordinary, and they're just tucked in the shadows underneath the, um, uh, the kelp. They do like caves. You will get snapper out of caves, like you get drummer out of caves. Used to be a good spot down the Jervis Bay before the government, in their wisdom, made it a national park. Um, and we got it open for what six months or something? Nah, they didn't. They didn't. They didn't. They shut it again after three months. Yeah, really. It was good. Like it was open for a couple of months. There was a spot down south, the south side of Jervis Bay, where Port Cliff face. They dropped down a, 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 a gutter, but off that gutter there was all big boulders, kelp boulders, and caves set up and everything. So it dropped down. The cliffs were like 20, 30 metres high. Only about five metres deep, big boulders, burn them out to like 15, 20 metres. But these rigid boulders had big caves in it. I saw a snapper up underneath the whitewash here, just followed them. They swam up about 15, 20 metres, and they went into a cave. Stuck my head inside the cave, it was pink, pink with snapper. So you can imagine a cave full of drum drummer, that's what the snapper were like. They of course in whichever way you wanted to, and they ended up getting one out of that. Went back there again. Still there, not the same day, like later on the day. So, where you see them first time, they, they're going to be there again. So, again, it's the diary, deep and open, and you'll um, get them, you know, sort of pick the pick up where they're going to be. Um, so yeah, snooping's not really something to practice here too much, it's more burly. Um, with burly, I um, don't use urchins very much. Uh, you can do it, you can use urchins tend to find on the, on the swim out. So, so I'm sort of talking because I, I found I know the spots. So if you know the spots, which come to time in the water, you know where they're going to be, you might swim out and you won't see snapper, you won't necessarily see them, but you know that time of year they might be there. So you swim out or shoot a few fish on the way out. Anything, so silvers, whatever you want, any, any, any burly works. Um, get to your spot, drop your rig, drop your anchor, 
set yourself up. I like setting a nice couple of big chunks of burley on the bottom. And so that brings all the other, um, that's why in two is very good when you burley in two people, because there are some slabs that come with burley, sharks will come in, has happened. Not common down the south coast, but I have ex had had experiences where pretty much matched out the size of bronze whale has come in and started doing laps around me, so you've got to be a little bit wary. And that was a bit interesting because I was there with my brother in law and I was burling up. This very great big bronze whale that came in. I went to have the burly, he did a few more laps around me. Pretty much the biggest bronze I've ever seen. He did a few more laps around me. It swims off, it's tangled around the rib cord, pays me backwards in the water. <laughs> I wasn't very happy about that. I was a little bit spooky. We were on our surf ski, so the surf ski is the only way to get to your spots. So we got on your ski. Oh, before I got on your ski, my brother all swims up with me. Look what I got here, about a five and a half kilo snap up within 50 metres where I was burling. And there were like a bunch of little school kids that hopped on our ski and all had their feet up on the ski, like, not putting their feet in the water because it was a big shark. Water, it was scary. Um, but action's good, so I'm not saying most of the sharks are whalers. But when you do burly up, you'll get a lot of um, wobbies. Wobbies, a lot of wobbies will come in on your burly. Stingrays. Now, stingrays are your friend, because they come in. That's normally a good indicator too when you get stingrays and wobby longs coming in. They're coming in, they stir up the bottom. That's why I like to leave big chunks of burley on the bottom. They'll come in, they'll stir up the bottom, and often, within five to ten minutes, when that's all stirred up, they start getting the snapper come in. And you'll often shoot the snapper from amongst the stingrays and that when they come in, the bottom will stir up. I've had stingrays sit on me virtually when I'm, um, when I'm burling up the snapper. But my experience with stingrays, they're that being very wary of them, be cautious of them. I've found, from what I've observed, if you go over the top of them, they'll stick their tail up at you and they get very aggressive. But on the same level, if you're burly enough, they're on the same level with them, they'll just swim up the other trees around you. They look very menacing, they look like they're going to have a go at you, but they're actually pretty placid. They still be wary of them if you're not comfortable with them. Don't stay on the bottom of the stingrays, but they, they do tend to just swim around you, do a lap of so going instead of burly up. Southeast Queensland, they go right around the pretty much X now. You'll get them. New Zealand, all the way up the north of the island. Yeah. Mm, yeah, they'll average, you know, they'll be up to 20 kilo. Um, the age, I actually read an interesting article about them. The eldest recorded in um, New Zealand, 63 years old. So they're a relatively long lived fish. They're 25 years for something, 8, 9, 10 kilo. So the report I read, 63 year old. I don't know how big the fish was there. Pretty old, so they're pretty long lived, uh, fish wise, but yeah, sorry. So some of the, the fish shows they talk about um, when they catch them by line, like in the, the height of summer, they're coming into about 20 fathoms, they think it's like 20 fathoms, the fish shows. Um, in the winter, they're back in you know, 80, 80 fathoms, so they're deep in water. Now, down the coast, as the water temperature drops, do they migrate up the coast? Mm -hmm. you, know, like you, can, you can always catch them up around. Like all year round? Yeah. When Sydney, Sydney, now it's like almost the end of the season. Yeah, because I mean, the, the colour fish are here at the moment. Actually, the season's starting now. Starting now. Yeah, so second school holidays is normally the indicator for me. I'll go drive on second school holidays and okay. get a good batch of supper. They wanted to land at Christmas time, that yeah. was January, and they were good fish. They were like six, seven kilo fish. So, yeah. I mean, they're, they're where you find them, I guess, aren't they? So, but they don't travel far either. They, um, they're pretty sedentary fish, so they could be the same one, same fish, same school of fish hanging around the big ones, same school of fish hanging around that same one. Like, Wabies are pretty big offshore reef. Could be the same fish hanging around. They, they tag them, they reckon. Uh, sing at the cops was a recorded um, distance swim, so it's 400 odd k's, that's a fair swim. But most within 50 k's of where they're tagged, they're going to get picked up, so they don't tend to swim too far. So they might go out to sea a bit deep and move around. Still 50 k's is a fair bit for a snapper, but they're pretty sedentary when you compare like, the play mix and whatnot. So, and, and I reckon it's the same fish you see year after year. Yeah. Yeah, because I've not been there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's come, you'll, you'll see marks on fish. Yeah, like all. same size. Yeah. I've been down to Shalaba and seen the same. Same sort of fish you go there one year, don't get it. You don't always get the snapper, but you do the same. And next year, they get a chance at it. Go back next year, it's on its own. Yeah. Same fish, pretty much the same size. Just sitting there for a year. So, yeah. I think 
Thank you. 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 Thank so for everybody here, how many times have you won the New Zealand Snapper Con? Oh, a couple of times. A couple of times. That's all snooping. That's all swimming. They did well in New Zealand. Um, the snooping, they get a lot more chances. They a lot more snapper in New Zealand. They were brilliant compared to us. Um, and then you see a couple of women school and you, you shoot one. Do they still have to go off and all that? That's why I said this is a good snap with three kilos. So if you build it up and a good skill comes in, you can shoot the small ones, there's a good chance you want to get the big ones. Mm -hmm. You wait long enough and the big ones will come. That's why you need the big bits of early in the bottom. Yeah. But some people think it's not it's not kosher to shoot the shoot them off early, it's not sort of the, the, the proper way to do it. But if you want to eat snapper, I reckon you won't get many if you just sort of sit up there and try to shoot them. Yeah. But what's happened to the doctor ninety percent of my fish have come off early. Yeah, so, so. we fish for them as well. Yeah. Too many, you just shoot a little lamb with it. I tend to leave the small ones, you'll have small ones like the kilo, kilo and kilo and a half, two kilo, you shoot up the end of your gun when you're early. But these days, five kilo ones in the back, you want to get in, right? You start shooting them, they're going to go. So they don't always give you a chance. Some of them, you, 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 you pass up on the, the smaller ones, the kilo ones, you're not going to get anything. Mm. And then he just decides to move off. But um, I've had days where I've shot one, the rest of the school's gone. I've had days where I've shot one, and then half an hour, shot another one. Shot three, or one of the one couple of squires and things like that. So you will get them again. Not always, probably three or two percent of the time. You might know one the rest of the time, then they pretty much all scatter and spook. So I think we we come up to Newcastle Bay and we get up the island and brought in seals a fair bit if you dived up there at all. Oh, no, I'm not that much, no. Uh, that the hotspot for them, that's like one of the Yeah, so yeah. 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 Early much? Um, I don't really dive from my boys are just starting to get into it. I, I fish from up there a fair bit. And, um, yeah, they're keen to jump in and have a practice. There's plenty of good ready ground up there. You're fishing in shallow water? Yeah, we're only fishing in like 30 foot, 40 foot, probably 60 max. Get in the place of that point and out of the ball, out of the front there, that drops on 100 foot on the sides, but they're sitting right on top, and they're sitting in that 8 metre, 9 metre stuff, yeah. and the gutter on top, and all the kelpies. So, yeah. I mean, so pretty, pretty, pretty shiny fish. Yeah. And, and, and when, it, when you're burly enough, you sort of got to find a little hide, a little hidey hide so you can hide into it. And, um, is that, actually, one of the prerequisites to do too with your gear is set up a target. Does anyone set up targets and shoot a target with their guns, see what their guns can do? Many. Well, you'd, you'd be surprised how far you can your gun actually can shoot and how good it is or how inadequate it is. So a lot of the time you'd be surprised how far actually that gun will shoot out. A lot of people come in and say, oh, you know, I've shot a fish at three and a half, four murders, you know, it could be two murders. So when you think about it, if you grab the end of that, pull the trigger, pull the gunner, pull the gun, yeah. you get far away, your gun stuck out, you get far away, that's only 1.1, yeah. right, and I like can shoot a snapper, it'll get it to there. Yeah. That's a good three and a half metres for picking a gun, and you'll back a good four and a half metres. Yeah. And this, this gun will reach out that far. So plenty of reach. Plenty of reach. So you, you don't necessarily need guns that shoot yes. long, long distances, but it has to be able to reach out that full metre mark. So yes. it's, it's like a, it comes around preference, what you like to use. And, and you're working in a rich area. Do they if you see one, you spook it, it swims off, take off, remember where you shot it, that's why you use the drop rig, not swim too far from it, go shoot some burly, find yourself a nice little hole to burly up in, start burly in. You might not see the snapper again, but start burly in. If you've seen one, unless it's spooked, you hear that someone's got a their tail and they take off in a hurry and they're really spooked, you'll hear them go. They just capitate, they go on, like you probably won't see that one again. But if you were to see one, just leave it alone, don't, ch don't chase them, you chase the market. 
the moment. <laughs> but having said that, as soon as they present a shot, take it. Because if you don't take that shot, you're not making that shot again. So it might be a shot from above. I don't tend to shoot them unless I'm. I tend to burly a lot. I just wait on the bottom and I, don't, I watch where they come in. Then I, I'll dive down. Or I'll hit board. Again, if you have one of the spots I've got at um, uh, down the coast, it's like the shallow reef here, on here. There's a gutter that leads into a big bowl. The big bowl is just here. That's about nine metres deep, the bowl. The first time I found it, I swam into the current here. There's a couple of squires and snappers sitting here. Shot one there, and another friend of mine took off chasing one. Hence, I didn't get that one. Went back a few more times, trying to work out how to get them. And I was seeing them. This, this comes up shallow again. It's like a shallow wall here, about probably three metres high on this wall here. Hooks around, down to the east, and that peters off and goes on the, a lot of kelp, a lot of broken air, a lot of kelp. And there's a big rise that comes up, it's only about two, two to three metres deep here, drops down about oh, five, six metres there, eight, nine metres there, and back up to five metres all around here. Second time I dived it, I saw the snapper come off the shallow. <coughs> that comes from about three metres down to the nine metres. The snapper was swimming that way. No chance, out in the open, couldn't get them. No, and they haven't really get these fish. Work it out, they tend they want to come from that way, in the low, that low tide, and the current's running that way. If there's no tide, they do like a bit of tide. If there was no tide, they don't tend to be there. Wait for a bit of tide. Low tide would be particularly good at this point here. We'll work out here that there's a little bit of, a lot of protection here. It's about three metres high, like I said. So I'd drop my burley on this little, it stepped up here about five metres, five or six metres just there, then drop down. I'd swim my burley out, swim your burley down to the bottom, which when you don't see any, of course. And Burley, drop the big chunks of burley there. You want your burley within that three and a half to four metre range of your gun, so you're not wasting your shot. You know your burley's in range, you know the fish are in range. Then I'd come back here, then I'd, then I'd sit above it, and I'd flick small bits of burley down those um, big ones in the bottom, but a couple of bits of burley in, in the water column. Snap a lot of it, they get agitated by it, they come in, they'll scream in, get a little bit floating down. But there's always big bits on the bottom. Stingrays would come in, wobbies would come in, stir the bottom up. I'd come back this way, Sit you, you drop rig up here, so I'll mark the boats, so it's in a, pretty much in a shipping lane, boats come screaming over the top, you've got to be beware, that's why you go to the in the morning. With the nut, somebody else, not on your own, it's somebody else, and I come back this way, and I need, from here to here, I'm well within range of the fish, I just dive down here, which is about a, maybe a five metre swim, swim up to there, sit down and wait as long as you could, better be two people, because you, you tend to sort of hold your breath a little bit better when someone's watching you, a bit more so, you feel a bit safer, a bit more confident. And bring the fish in, the fish would come in. A lot of the time, you're on the bottom, the fish come in anyway. So they just come in, do a bit of a loop, they come in, look at your burley, take a shot, you got them. Simple as that. It's not that hard. If you see a buddy you're chasing, you're not going to get them. Out the open here, you're not going to get them. So you pretty much got to be a little bit sneaky. So you basically got to set your burley up somewhere where you can hide. They might not make you there, they might see you. I'll see you there, but you've got to go and pull the shot. So yeah, they'll come in, they'll, they'll put their head in a hide, often a bit deeper than you. So you might drop your hole, that's a bit of a step down. I drop a burly in the hole and I'll, I'll come in there with their head down and they're above them. You just take a shot from them. Or a bit of an angle down towards them so all they're busy feeding them away. So most of the spots are that, most of the spots are burly out. Some will even hide your burly and um, keep it smooth and play the fish. Yeah. So, Bob, you reckon if, if you've got the kelp, it's alright that you've got burly balls down into that? Then it doesn't. Then if you find, say, North Wollongong, for example, it's a lot like the Mary's. So you people probably got you both probably got the Mary's. The Mary's like areas with, with, with no fish, and you find pockets of fish, you'll see squire, you'll see brim, you find a nice little hidey hole doing the same thing. But areas where there's a lot of kelp, like that, I'd find a sand patch on a sand at North Wollongong. There's a lot of areas like the, like the Mary's, you swim along, it's kelp, it's crap, there's nothing. It's a little sandy hole. It's a little sandy hole with a gutter leading out of it. Burl out in that sandy hole. You come back, hide in the kelp. You'll find in that kelp there's often cracks in the kelp anyway. You bury yourself in the kelp, but as you go and find it in that sandy hole, plus within, it's not going to be that clear either. You might have seven or eight metres in there. You might just sort of over the kelp, they're really blend right in. They're hard to spot over the kelp. So you want a bit of reflection, you want a bit of sand, you want to be able to see them coming in. So but if you've got a bit of a hole within distance of the kelp where you can hide in the kelp, good luck. They get in the kelp in New Zealand. You can hide on the reef edge in New Zealand and look in, get in the kelp. The kelp's a fair bit longer, probably got stalks about two, three, four foot high. You'll still get in the kelp and you see snapper cruising through the kelp once it's cruising through the trees. So, but early May, you're better off having somewhere open. You can just sneak in and get them. So, yeah. What type of burly are you talking about? Like anything that's that old? Yeah, and the cuttlefish are good. Cuttlefish are good. They get the ink. Um, I like being them anyway, so I'll keep the, the white bit of the mantle, but the, the tentacles, the, the head, 
the ink for the guts and everything. I, I can to drop the ink as close as I can on Burley, but it just makes a nice pocket for a little bit and things. I mean, it just disguises you. And you just put it all on uh, one spot with the ink as well. You can surprise what you're going to do. Pretty much watch what sort of fish going out of the ink and ducking around. But mainly, just any fish, anything, basically. So, crockies don't seem to work as good. I don't tend to use that sort of stuff, but luxury. When you say you're leaving a big bit on the bottom, is that like half a fish? Yeah. Yeah, I'd say it's a, say a two kilo, say a two kilo silver, rather than say. Like, I'd say it happens to a five kilo silver, I'd leave a chunk of the wing, a big bit of the wing, a big bit of the back, and, and the head, head leave the wings on it, just leave it sit on the bottom so the wallies come in and chew it up and stir it up, and the rest I'll just flick down. Yeah. You, don't, you don't want to swim away with it either. So that, that, yeah, I know, but they do. They, that, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if they swim away with it. They're not going to go far, are they? Well, not the big pieces, that's yeah. why the snapper come in and they don't tend to get the big pieces up and swim off of it. But the small pieces keep them interested in come back. So you're a place that every time they take off a little big piece, you put another one there. Yeah, if I shot at them by then, if I burn it up and they haven't turned up, oh sorry, if they turn up and take it away, I'll go out and get a few more fish and burn it up and see if they come back again. You can be, you know, I've kept them entertained for a couple of hours. Like the school of snapper, I've never got a shot at them, but they just can't come in and they have taken it early. I'm trying to overfeed them, that's why I put my bigger pieces where they don't tend to uh, sort of swim, but, but you can take them around for a couple of hours, a school of snapper. Or they can, a lot of the time, they'll just turn up, have a look at you, grab a fish, and you can gone, that's the last to sell them. So, that all comes with experience, time in the water, so, 30 odd years of diving for them, or diving, but 10, 15 years of chasing snapper, you, you sort of get a bit of a knack of what they might be. You, you get filled now, so don't worry, I'll get caught out plenty of times. So. When you when you reckon the coyotes die in the middle of June, they start peeling off. Popping, yeah, June, yeah, June, July, I'll start with popping. Yeah. So, but you, they don't, the coyotes aren't depending to get the snapper. Like, oh, no, I know. They get the good ones in, yeah, like I said, Christmas. Mm -hmm. ones, so. Yeah, like like when you talk to like down JB, you talk to some of the fish shows and they go, oh, only June, only June, but like you still see a lot sometimes in the summer there. They yeah, seem to yeah. like at a certain time. Like I've been there. In, have heaps of them in the sun. Generally, that's fine. Generally, June, July. Yeah, but it's like they almost come in on different stuff because the fish shows don't get many during the summer when they can, like, or sort of just after sort of Christy sort of thing when they come in. But they seem to be like full of sea urchin at that time of year. Yeah. It's almost like they feed on different stuff, and if they're, if they're feeding directly on the sea urchin, maybe the fish shows don't catch them as much or that because they're. Yeah, but the, that's interesting because they're pretty voracious foods anyway. They pretty much eat anything. Oh. I don't tend to find the urchins sort of work as good for early day because you know, like, yeah. you know, no, in Australia, I haven't been in New Zealand, they work well. And hands down, you'd be using sea urchin in New Zealand if you were down looking for snapper. So, by far, I reckon sea urchin is better than fish in New Zealand, but you fish it better than you have than sea urchin. Yeah. Are they different up the coast? Um, mm -hmm. I've seen. Um, and, well, you think in like, around Cox and that, you'll get them off like extended reefs offshore, you'll get them. A little bit of pressure ridge, yeah. Yeah, they, get yeah, they, they, like, they like the pressure ridge. Um, but just more, more tidal, really. I don't, I don't think it really matters. As long as there's a bit of tidal movement, it's a lot of movement anyway. So it's just got to be a little bit of movement. I'm not sure what you mean by that expression for a bit of tide. What, what are you talking about? <coughs> it's not high tide. Like, the high tide doesn't have much movement. The tides come in, there's not that much movement. The tide 
sides going out, of course you're going to get a total move, you get from like half an hour current or something, moving, moving the bottom around. I've got an example from what I go out North Wollongong, the high tide doesn't seem to work. So you, you really want to be there at low tide, there seems to be a lot of water movement from shore, going offshore, and I don't know if that's bringing all that, all the bait out with it, or whatever, but it's not the same to be there from the currents going offshore that little bit, yep. just because it's off the tide. You're talking about the run out. Yeah, so he's not, he's not sort of not talking about right on the dead low, he's talking about going down to the low when you've still got the, the movement. Yeah. Because like with any fish, any fish, like the old Eddie, can they run their phones? They're the same, they want to live in the current to the live. You still get them, but when the current stops, but not as much. Yeah, so it's like a bit of a water movement. So, yeah, it's like a bit of a water movement. Yeah, it's like a bit of a water movement. Yeah, it's like a bit of a water movement. You rarely see, you might see maybe one. Why you sort of have to swim it down? You always, I always swim your burly down. I just don't drop it and hope it lands. I want it to land. I, I want it. I want it there. I don't want to sort of cut it up and have a drift over here. I want it where I want it. So you know, okay. swim your burly. You swim a couple of big chunks down. The small bits leak on the surface. That's the, the burly trail going. But the majority of it, you want it to go where you're spearing. Then you have to get the burly in one spot if there's a bit of current. Oh, then it gets it behind the rocks. Like that's like that's flat. There's a couple of little rocks and pebbles and all that. They, they touch in. <coughs> I'm not talking about current you can't swim against, it's just that little bit of water movement, like it's just still. When you go out and swim some days, it's still, you don't get any movement. It's a slight, slight trickle. So when you, when I'm on the surface of Berlin, say that's, that's only what, five metres deep, six, well, probably six metres deep when I drop it. I'll cut it here, but my Berlin might come same over and say wherever it is. So it might just drop away that way. Just enough, the bigger bits and the small bits will flat off. They'll probably flat off 10 metres by the time they hit the bottom of the river. <coughs> Especially when you're snooping, you've got to be as quiet as you can. Yeah. Squeaky fins, making bubbles. I can weight this off a little bit if you're going to be snooping, so yeah, you're heavier. You're not in deep water though, remember? You're only in that five, six, seven metres of water. So you're sort of close to negative. Yeah. When you're swimming along, so you don't make any noise. Then purging is not all. That's where you're coming. Yeah. So you talk about not, not making any noise. That comes back to the question I had earlier about working in areas, spearing fish on that particular reef and then you start to snap the pack off or whatever. So you're, you're saying you can continue spearing and that's... Do you want to get snapper or you don't want to get snapper? Yeah, you know, I want to get snapper. Right, well I want to be spearing. Right. I'd swim out if you know the spot. If, like, if you don't know the spot, obviously you're going to get experience. If you see one, remember it, go back another day. But on the next day you go out, spear the fish on the way out. And when you get there, don't shoot anything. You know, when you're spearing, just put out that bit of that burly there. So I'll, I'll spend days. You've got to make a concerted effort to target them. They're not, they're not like that. They're not a bike catch like them. You've pretty, pretty much got to have a bit of a go and try to spear them. If you want to be reasonably successful at it. So, which means getting up early, nice and dark, get down there, before everyone else, and do what you have to do. That's him not covering everything. Straight point or? You won't get that range. Most of your fish aren't. They're that three to four metres a lot of them, so you're not going to prank as well. You can get, use, trust me, you can use prankies if you're comfortable with it. If you've got a gun that shoots out, they just don't. You need something. 
That just seems to have a little bit extra, so you got you, you guarantee that three and a half to four, three and a half at least to guarantee from the kicking account. Maybe four when it's still another half a metre to go. You're not comfortable with that, use the one point two. One point three, yeah. Yeah. Well you use the other guns and you use roller guns, use what you want, but I just like using that. That's my yeah, that's my sort of gun of choice. Change and snap it that is. It's quick, it's easy to load. Yeah. And you can dump it down too, you don't have to use base rubbers, you wouldn't want to shoot burly, you just load up with one rubber. Are you using the seven or seven and a half? Seven. 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 I don't need six and a half anymore. I've got six point seven five mils for you, another one point one, but probably a bit too light. I think you want that little bit of mass as well. Yeah. A bit of a boogie. So you still got to punch for a half decent fish. You can see yeah, like a five, six, seven kilo snapper, three and a half, four meters like me. Yeah, it's still substantial. So it's still <laughs> that's, that's a snapper call. <laughs> Do you take that many bounce off your head? No, I missed a few, eh? I missed a few, but no, not really. Yeah, it's not some of the big ones that aim for the skull. No. No, I shot two in New Zealand that bounced off, so yeah. they both crackers. How far away are they? Oh, no, decent shots, but not that far. One of them wasn't. One of them was, it was about, I reckon, about 12 kilos, because I did a circuit and came back there and shot 9 kilo, one about 10 minutes later, same spot. Okay. So that's a pretty recent footage of Leo Pat Swanson had some footage of a film fishing days. You had a sequence of any snapper there yet there. You had a sequence of photos. They're all 10 kilo, 11 kilo. He reckons one around 12 kilo mark in a line. As soon as you have a kilo pack photo, next sequence of photos is just a sequence of big snapper. <laughs> you couldn't spit it because of the film fishing. You know, a big 10, 12 kilo fish just crossed the road. You would tell them to spot that. <laughs> they, they, they have snapper sloop like competition for their nationals and that. I mean, tall curler, uh, even the skinny thing, tall curler snapper, uh, pretty pretty fish. Yeah, they made a long girl. Yeah, their record's 15 curler, I think, spirit. It's like 15 curler. Uh, it's up there. Yeah, yeah Pat just missed it, didn't he? Hey? Pat just missed the record? No, he, he had it, lost it, yeah, got it, I think he's got it again. Right, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck shooting, unless you want to shoot, no, you want to shoot them, you've got to go to South Australia. But good luck, you might get eaten down there. So. <laughs> I think it's pretty big. I remember seeing a photo of one in a New Zealand uh, official magazine. It was hanging in the door of a trawler. The light back up on that photo again. I keep it on. It's from the top of the tail to the tip of its nose. Get that on. It would have been, I don't know, forget the weight, what happened to it. Oh, it lost it. But it trolled out a real deep water. They came out of there deep water. They said it was a cracker. They get a little bit of water. They get more for Coleman. They get them in that, on that kind of region, all that sort of stuff. They get to Norfolk. Yeah, it might catch them on the shelf. Like when they're fishing for bark on yeah. 250 metres and yeah. stuff. Yeah, we have that time of the motor mark, five and five and those sort of things. So, good luck trying to spear it in the time of the metres, eh? Because you're welcome to it. Mm -hmm. so, stick with that five, six, seven metres, so. Well, you don't really sort of have the impression they sort of go on deep water around here, do they? Yeah. Yeah, I would have thought you'd, you'd go to the downline. Does water tend to make a difference? Well, they prefer warm water. Nah. Uh, you're okay, pretty much. The smaller ones will come in, like, um, the summertime, the smaller ones, even some big ones in the summer, yeah. basically all year round. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't really sort of chase it from the over, and then this sort of stuff, but mm -hmm. half the time you just crack it in place, you don't know, really know. But you will get them. That's what parks are good for, it's a brilliant spot for yeah. so, You know, they would do that for rock up up Gary. Park your car down the surf club, you have a nice big rock up up Gary. You'll be surprised what you see on there. So, Snoop snapper, nice and slow. Yeah, you can get them down the river, Like I said, you pretty much get them. I've, I've seen them, I've heard of people getting them pretty much from shit, Diama, even further south. I know Pam for a fact, all the way up to Wayne, Boona, yeah, every headland. So, spending time in the water looking for them. So if you're chasing them for a couple of hours, like Said earlier, I mean, you must have a fair bit of uh, you know, early 
Yeah, yeah look, when they get eaten, you go back, shoot some more. It, it depends on the day. Some days they're just there, some days you do yeah. one little burley, that's it, they're gone. But if you keep seeing them, then they're not coming in on range, you go shoot some more burley, and they leave bigger chunks on the bottom so they so they hang around. You don't want them taking off of your burley. You, you, you definitely want to get those stingrays and those mobbies coming in because they're, they're yeah. indicators. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're real good indicators. I think when I shot the, my snapper that was bigger than Dave's, <laughs> so, what, what was that then? It was not bigger than Dave. <laughs> I think it had about two kilos of early, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Your early? Yeah. Yeah. I actually shot it from the surface. I was there early, and I just opened my eyes, and he was right there. Yeah. I'm trying to shoot it like that. Yeah. I've, I've had a couple of Davey ones, so you don't worry about that. So. That's why we weigh in the Orban Garden. So you can't do it early, can't count anything. Need a couple of tissues in Brazil, and they weigh. Yeah. So I just the Well, you don't necessarily need long breath holes either to get them. So, you know, I, nice little tender water. Having said that, I have done some reasonable long breath holes for them. Uh, hence, I think in pairs, because you feel better, someone can always save you. Uh, that's what he also <laughs> did. He, he has, got, he has got Ben. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's, a, by the way. It's a bit what's, what's a reasonable <laughs> breath hold? Like, are we talking three Five minutes? minutes. Oh. Four minutes? <laughs> I'm sure, Matthew, you can hold your breath at least a minute, couldn't you? That'd be a given. You know, I imagine a minute would be pretty average for most people. Tap on another 15, 20 seconds, and it pretty much maps you out on most snapper. So, not too. Sometimes you'll see them on the bottom in a minute, minute and a half sort of thing, and then they. I tend to forget to breathe when you see snapper. I've never seen 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 snapper. Don't think about doing your longest dive, just take your mind off, off breath. Without hyperventilating, you just sort of relax, breathe normal, and dive down. You'd be surprised how long you can sort of hold your breath in them reason just by taking your mind off. You think about breathing, guess what you want to do? You want to breathe. So, yeah. But don't push it by all means. Just, just don't. It's not worth it. It's only a fair shot. It ain't worth it. So, yeah. But with, with time, you do pick it up. You do pick up your breath holds. You got any good techniques for it? You might better be something to practice on. Just, just sitting in watching TV or something. Hold your breath, what you tell me. Oh, I don't know. There's a heap on the neck you can have a look at. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah, no, I don't. I just get rather get in the water. There's yeah. nothing like having time in the water. We've been dying fit for them, so. Get the app on your phone. Yeah, yeah. Is, it, is it for your shoe? Uh, yeah. Air training. Right. Yeah. I'm old school. I've only got a phone. I can't even receive messages. Uh, send messages or send messages. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen a few snapper in my time as well, and I, 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 I swear that they, they switch off from time to time once you get them excited in Berlin. They can do. At different times. They can do. Yeah. yeah. But having said that, you think they're switched off all the time, I just come in here in Berlin and yeah, we've never seen them again. Yeah. So that's why they're saying, it's fascinating to chase them, so you never know what they're going to be. But most times they do switch off, but yeah. eventually get sort of, that's why the rays and the, and the earls and the mobbies that come out agitate the bottom, they go, oh, what are they eating? They sort of they get comfortable with your presence as well. I wouldn't say comfortable. Um, they're very wary. Oh, so wary. They're very wary. Oh, you're saying coming non, five, non six meters fish, away. You're not, you're not shooting the little fish. Yeah. They become more and more. But they'll still sit out on the edges, not come in. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you're not paying attention. I was going to grab the bird and take yeah. off. You got to be ready to shoot when they come in. Yeah. So yeah. they're still pretty, pretty wary. So, so nice chasing them. So. Yeah. 
you know, if everybody pushed a little bit out of the way, you get to the... It's good that you got the little ones sitting right in front of you. That is, you, you get them sometimes that go away and go and uh, they bother you. Uh, I went down on the motor one this body, and he never shot a snapper, so they three kilo. I did a bomb, and I said, why is it three kilo? I went to cruise around, had the back here. Heaps of small ones, kilo, kilo, and a bit just sitting there. He dives out, he comes up. He wonder why I was screaming at him and cursing him. Well, it's the first time I've ever shot, is that kilo? I said, what are you doing? Three kilo, three and a half kilo, one bomb. You know, you see it again. But he was happy because he's just supposed to have a yeah. smile. <laughs> Don't waste the chance. So I was telling you, Randy, about the, um, the hive that your friends had built. <laughs> you want to tell us that story? <laughs> <laughs> Another similar spot to that. So there's like, it's a great idea. So yeah, right, it's, it's a great idea. idea. Yeah. It's, a pretty, it's a pretty good little, little spot. <laughs> similar setup, actually. There's all little ledges and caves and whatnot around it. Yeah. You've got a there's a bit of a hollow and a bit of a deeper spot here. Here it raises up about a metre, all along here, and a bit of a sort of ledge that runs out. Here it raises up about a metre, big flat plateau. Here's a bit of a gutter that runs out. Up here, there's a big, another big wall. About uh, a metre, you know, a bit high. It runs back this way and across here. A friend of mine couldn't, I, I tell Scooper story, I mean. a friend of mine couldn't get him. So he got a bit sneaky. He caught all the little rocks like the little, like the little, like the little um, bow bird he was. He made a nice little rock wall just sitting here. He built it over the rock, there was another little hiding hole, and he just sat behind his rock wall, burled it up in that little deep hole out, and then he shot the stab from the other way. Another mate of mine, he thought I was a little bit, well, let's just say, not that long. <laughs> he thought he'd be a little bit sneaky, but a vice. He got himself a vice fed up, scrammed the vice out. It was like um, uh, a lolly EK80. On the top here, oh, this is the big ridge. Put his gun in there with a bit of string. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Who's that? Lays the vice on the bottom. Lays the vice on the bottom. With the gun in the vice. Hurl it up. Oh, yeah, I think it was on top there. He was shooting. Hurl it up in front of the gun. Wait for the snapper to shoot in front of the gun. Put a big bit of string on the surface. You've got to adapt. Did he get one? No, no, he's going to pull the string and the vice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how you got to show some initiative. Did you know who goes now with Alex the Seal? You're getting that idea. So, pretty much where you've seen them, you've obviously seen a few little ones. Derek is bigger. That was when Joe's last day, was it? Week. 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 So, last question, maybe? What else can I tell us a Marlon story? It's when you get old, you get a little bit senile, so you sort of, when you have a boat, you tend to not to unload your gun until you get to the boat. And I'm thinking, oh well, nothing here. Call the boat over, unload the gun, the boat's coming towards me. All the way, all the way, all the way, all the way, the gun, all the way, 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 all the And then early, early in the year you were doing the, the, the burling up for shooting, looking, so you're making sure the big ones are as well. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> the blue bottle, yeah. Yeah, the opportunist. Yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm a nice sort of guy, so you would have got the flyer saying I'm that sort of bloke, I'm a, you know, I'm a nice all around sort of guy, and that's what I do for mates, I'm burling up, I'm safe, you shoot 31 kilo king, you just let them know. No, I only grudges of course. <laughs> And you've got a yellow fin on the same day. And a little yellow fin, yeah. It hasn't been out in the since. Not welcome. Shh, these mates, we're not filming this, are we? You've got to have something else you need to know about him. more want to know about Squire, I can sort of stand by nothing. That him, I've covered everything. Oh, it's been pretty comprehensive. 
I'm just surprised you got that shower. I'm not, I'm not sure if spots around Sydney where you'd, where you'd uh, I tried Mary's. Um, renowned spots would be Gibbon. Gibbon's in the spot for them. Uh, yeah, a lot of the time you've got to be there yeah, real early for them to be up in the shallows because they'll yeah. soon be a bit later yeah, in the day. Really you you got to remember most fishermen? I've got to get out of my hangover for it. <laughs> 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 I've read good articles about them fishing off uh, jetties in South Australia, I think it was, and they see that first 15 minutes after the sun comes up. And I'm in the water yeah. and I'm burning up for them and the sun's just creeping up. So yeah, that's it. you're in the water. Swimming out in the dark, it's still dark when you're swimming out, and you get to your spot, the sun's just coming up, you know, in the building. Like the city, if you want to get it, <laughs> <That's right. laughs> you've got to be a little bit committed. Mm -hmm. uh, and that shit, everything else around it, so. Yeah. Mm. So, if you're diving spots you don't know, do you re would you recommend just shooting, getting some burley straight up and just looking around for a good spot, or are you kind of like suss out your spot? And come if back? you were to find a spot, there's a couple of spots out wide, right out wide of Shalama, for argument's sake. There's a white rock, and there's a couple of fingers of the reef that hold fish. Fish aggregation area, you'll see bream on the bottom, you'll see niggers, saw tail, hang around. Snap will live there too. So you just go out there, we'll be up there and see what comes in. And out of the area, find an aggregation for fish. They'd start shooting the fish, take off, go back 100 yards or so, remember where the spot is, go back, shoot the burly, go back, dump it, and just see what comes in. So and you start picking up a sort of a memory bank and say, take, we've not been doing this for years, so it's easy to talk about it, it's easy to sort of like, yeah, this is what I do. But Years of observing it, so you make your own observations and you might have some different techniques of shooting them too. You might work for you, so. Much of that life, sounds great. I've got scoopers up before you. Yeah, you might have to get them up on cleaning stations. Yeah, cleaning stations, yeah. Um, I think that first big one I shot was getting cleaned from memory. It was just sitting there, but it was in the water. It was just sitting there, I think, around the same little fish. Well, it was bound to spot in Jay's boat, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah,
They will, they'll sit just under a lot of washers, like when you see them up the sources and stuff. And yeah. A lot of the time they'll be sitting just underneath the white water. Yeah. You get that at a cost too, really. Oh, mm. you have a wash on the old. Yeah. Small yeah. ones, like at North Head, you get them in the North Head under the wash. When the wash breaks in the middle of that bay, they'll be tucked up under that wash. That's like the deep eye of that. You can put them in that 12, 13 metre mark. You can tuck that bundle of wash in there as well, first thing in the morning. So, it's not a lot of fish, but they do the space. It's good for flicks on plastic. And baits of snapper, and when I'm chasing king and barm and tunes and that, they'll just put it out plastic first thing in the morning. Make a good snapper tucked up and they'll have a water call and they'll have a good face. They do come in. Good luck shooting them out the air, you know. Have I covered everything? No question. No nothing. So we're all going to go out and shoot snapper now.